Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone. First tonight, news China is lifting its ban on importing Australian rock lobster has Tasmanian fishers cautiously rejoicing. The move welcomed by many, but some are warning it could be local buyers who pay the price. Muir's has been a staple on Hobart's waterfront for more than 50 years. Walk in most days and you're sure to find rock lobster on the menu. The business selling between 5 and 10 tonnes every year. Talk about the Western Australian and South Australian, but Tassie lobster is something special. After four years, China has agreed to lift all restrictions on Australia's live lobster trade before the end of the year. The industry worth roughly $50 million in Tasmania and up to $700 million nationally. That is money that's coming into the Australian economy to grow Australian jobs and to benefit Australian households. While well, Muir says it's a good move for the industry, we're warned time will tell if those on the ground or boat will reap the benefits. The difference between the price they pay to lease the quota and the price they get back to the boat is pretty slim and the margins are very, very fine for them. With the ban lifted, Will believes prices will go up, with Tasmanians potentially forking out more if they want to serve crustacean on the Christmas menu. That will be the price we pay for getting a whole lot of export dollars into our Tasmanian economy. Magnificent product and it'd be sad to see Tasmanians have to resort to Queensland prawns or something, you know. Lily Thompson, 7, Tasmania News. A controversial government decision to ditch thousands of dollars in funding for a bike lane trial has been condemned by Hobart's bicycle network. Hobart Council now forced to fund the project as it looks to get more cars off the road. Extensive negative feedback, the reason why the state government's backpedalled support for bike lanes on Collins Street. It is opposed to the project and that is why we are withdrawing our $170,000 that we were going to provide to it. The decision met with uproar, some questioning the government's commitment to inclusive transport infrastructure in the CBD. The community has been calling for safer routes to walk, ride and scoot for years. The Collins Street trial was a response to that call from the community. It's not only about keeping cyclists safe, it's about um, changing the congestion on our roads. The trial would see 50 car parks lost if bike lanes were introduced across the three blocks. But Hobart Council says the wheels will keep turning, now forced to fork out $170,000 from its own transport budget. It's just disappointing because this kind of infrastructure should be a shared responsibility between state and local governments like it is in every other capital city. It's really the lack of commitment that we're seeing from the state government on in, in regards to active transport. Many capitals use bike networks to create a 15 minute city, meaning residents have access to everything they need via bike or foot within 15 minutes. But a recent study has found Hobart to fall just outside that, coming in at 16 minutes. The national practice in every other capital city and indeed most large regional cities is the move towards separated cycleways. The government will still fund shared paths along Augusta Road and Castre Esplanade. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. Longford residents are ramping up their fight against an oil giant, calling on the state government to step in and stop a planned 24-hour BP fuel depot on the town's doorstep. The group is seeking a parliamentary inquiry as it asks for a different location to be considered amid safety concerns over the current site. It's a totally inappropriate location and it should be out on a major highway, not in the entrance to Longford. Something's gone very, very wrong where you've got a town that's up in arms about a development that doesn't make sense, that actually makes the problems worse and hasn't listened to a single thing people have said. The state government insists the proposal is a matter for the local council. Tasmania's most notable heritage listed places have appeared on a new website. Discover Heritage aimed at encouraging more people to learn about our state's history.
the interactive page offering information on thousands of places from historic villages to bridges and buildings. Users can discover sites by typing in a location, architectural style or even a designer. Face painting, line dancing and balloon art have gone on show in Hobart with the Council of Ageing hosting a fun day. The free event aiming to encourage intergenerational relationships with experts emphasising the importance of socialisation across all ages. Social isolation is actually worse almost for you than smoking cigarettes so we know it has a big impact on your physical and mental wellbeing. And kicking off Seniors Week which begins on Monday. Our next generation of MasterChef hopefuls have been put to the test working alongside industry professionals for an intensive lesson. The popular school holiday program hoping to inspire participants to consider a career in hospitality. Mini MasterChefs in the making. These junior cooks given a crash course in cookery. None of them have been in a kitchen like this before so it's, a, it's scary and exciting all at the one time. Mixing together a passion for cooking, a willingness to learn new skills and the chance to pick the brains of some of the industry's best. Yes, 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 yes. They're using knife skills, um, they're using organisational skills, uh, tastes and textures, uh, provenance, you know, where things have come from. The young apprentices taking full control of the kitchen, dealing with some early curveballs. I burnt my first piece of toast, so that was a good lesson. The ultimate pressure test igniting more than just some school holiday fun. The cooking lesson doubling as a fundraiser for Teen Challenge Tasmania. We work with a lot of local youth, so in mentoring, drug education, in our Hope Cafe we train youth. And an early recruitment drive, inspiring more budding chefs to consider a career in the kitchen. And hopefully get them, plant that seed to get them into the industry and uh, hopefully be chefs down the track. Well I've always wanted to kind of be something to do with cooking so it's really cool. Victoria Riso, 7 Tasmania News. The former artistic director behind the West Coast Unconformity Festival has turned his attention to planning the third year of Hobart's current exhibition planned for next November. The program is set to feature the work of 10 artists across the CBD for five months. The theme is simply here. Well, it's not art form specific, which is the really exciting thing. So we might have writers, visual artists, performers. I don't think I have an ideal candidate. I think what we're looking for is um, diversity and how people respond to the notion of here. Expressions of interest for artists are open now. Young cricketers in Hobart have taken to the pitch in a slightly non-traditional way. The future stars testing out the sport as part of the all-girls colour blast, experiencing the game through skill and game-based activities. It's showcasing that, you know, cricket can be lots of different things rather than just about a ball and, and some stumps. Close to 450 girls have taken part in the program across the state over the school holidays. Two wickets from the Tasmanians today wasn't nearly enough to secure a result in their first Sheffield Shield match. Matt Kuhneman and Here Kieran Elliott on. taking a scalp each as the Victorians made it to 120 on the final day before the two skippers decided to pull the pin and call it a draw just after 2.30. Back from concussion, Tabitha Savile's got her Hurricanes campaign underway with a 30 not out off 16 in their pre-season spring challenge opener against the Renegades. The Canes finishing their 20 overs on 169. Hayley Silver Holmes then putting the hosts on notice with three wickets from her four overs, but Melbourne would just sneak home, making the target with five balls to spare. Alana Smith's Minnesota Lynx are off to a good start in the WNBA final. The Hobart Export landing nine points and taking nine rebounds in the overtime win against New York Liberty, who were led by Smith's Opal coach, Senny Brondello. The Lynx are up 1-0 in the best of five series. Clint Steindl admits he's not fully versed when it comes to the rules around inbound passes after the skipper caused quite a stir following last week's game. The call sparked wide debate among fans as it ultimately led to Tasmania clinching the game in overtime. I'm just thankful uh, they let 
let it go for, for whatever it was and didn't blow the whistle and let the play continue. I think maybe it's just a misunderstanding of the rules. Some people believe that you can only pivot when you're on the sideline, um, but yeah, I'm very clear that it's one metre. The Jack Jumpers are flying off to play the Illawarra Hawks, who are off to a 3-1 start to the season. And finally tonight, how old is too old to swing an axe? Well, according to competitors at today's Masters Games Woodchopping Carnival, there's no such thing. In what seems like one of the more physically intense sports on the Tasmanian calendar, age is certainly no barrier. Exeter hosting the Masters Games Woodchopping Carnival, and it was the oldest axeman, New South Welshman Jack Baxter, cleaning up with three gold medals aged 81. Yeah, I didn't think I'd do any good, but yeah, this soft wood's good. Yeah, it doesn't hurt much. Hobart's Sheila Rumley has been out of action for five months, awaiting a knee replacement. My physio told me to try and do hydrotherapy. Deciding to stick with Woodchop instead and setting a blistering pace to win the ladies' single hand saw. I was a late starter. <laughs> I started in 97 and we didn't have any um, girl singles for oh, a long, long time. Mm. Yeah, but I enjoyed it. And finishing just ahead of break day Mayor Mick Tucker in the 65-69 to 69 underhand, Hewenville's Gary Lovell. The two-time world champions grown up in the sport. When you had uh, seven other brothers cutting alongside and all of them was champions, they made you and everything you get, so... And I'm the only one that's still cutting. Competition continues tomorrow with the Open Carnival. Yeah, they made it look pretty easy, Kim. I know, I can't even chop sticks for the wood fire at all, so very impressive. Thank you, Nick. Well, Kai will join us after the break with the weather forecast. Evening. Another cold front crossed the state this afternoon, bringing showers and more gusty winds today. In the 24 hours to 9 pm, the highest rainfall recorded was 22 millimetres at North Boomerang. Hobart, Devonport, and Burnie all 17 today. Launceston a little warmer with 19. 20 the state's high recorded at Friendly Beaches, 19 at St Helens, Mariah Island 17, 16 the top four the islands, Smithton and Bushy Park, Low Head and Grove both 15, 14 in Strawn, and 9 in Lyweenie. Cloudy conditions were seen over western Tasmania today with partly cloudy conditions elsewhere. A mid to high level cloud band moved over the majority of the eastern WA. Tomorrow a high will shift over Bass Strait. A trough extends along the coast of WA, the top end, and over inland Queensland and New South Wales. West to southwesterly winds reaching up to 30 knots about the south and east in the early morning. West to southwesterly swells building to 6 metres. We have a strong wind warning for coastal waters tomorrow between St Helens to Low Rocky Point. There is also a warning to sheep graziers for the southeast. 17 and partly cloudy skies on the way for Hobart 15 and possible morning showers for Maydina. Partly cloudy skies in Oatlands 15 or so. 19 and partly cloudy in Launceston, a fine and sunny day in Devonport 16. A morning frost followed by cloudy skies for Lyoweenie 13 there. Some lovely sunshine for Burnie 16, partly cloudy skies for Strawn and Marawar 14 degrees. Sunshine extending to St Helens 16, sunny also in Swansea 17, 17 also in Orford but remaining partly cloudy. Now we can expect a morning frost and inland fog on Sunday. Light showers will develop about the west and far south in the evening. Monday showers contracting to the northeast in the late morning before easing in the afternoon. And on Tuesday it's a bit of a mixed bag, some showers towards the east but partly cloudy elsewhere. Further across the country tomorrow, fine in Adelaide and Canberra tomorrow, possible showers in Brisbane and they're chasing 27 degrees. Partly cloudy in Hobart right now, 11 degrees, Launceston sunny, 15 and also sunny in Devonport with 13. Now if you're a night owl, the best time to view the aurora will be between 11 and 3am. Kim? I will try and stay up for it. Thank you Kaya. That is all your news for now. I'll be back later with updates. Thanks for joining us everyone. Good night.